What's up gamers, my name is Petty Fatty Cake and today I will be making a guide for the Giants Foundry and instead of making this super long, I want to make it nice, short, and sweet and get you in there as soon as humanly possible. Let's really quick just run through the who, what, where, when, and why of the Giants Foundry. Who? Uh, both Iron Man and Mains, it's great for both of them. It is super good for iron for recycling some of your loot that you don't really have any extra use for instead of elking, so it's a good way to kind of uh, get some experience twice out of those. You'll be creating these absolute units of a sword that giants would be using to fight each other, and by turning those in, you gain both EXP and points towards the reward shop. Where is the giant's foundry? It's uh, over by El Carid, but the easiest way to get there is if you go down to your, uh, your grouping for the mini games and just find your way to Giant's Foundry. Just click on teleport and it should teleport you right there. And why should you do the Giant's Foundry? There's a, uh, I'd say like three main reasons. Reason number one, there is a reward shop these are great rewards for irons and for mains you have the collection log and the kovacs grog does sell pretty well in the grand exchange number two you got smithing experience probably the main reason to come here but you can get up to 250k smithing experience and it's really not that quick intensive and last but not least it can be less expensive than other smithing methods and even net you some profit depending on what bars and alloys you choose requirements are super simple just 15 smithing and that is the requirement requirement to complete Sleeping Giants, which is a quest, and don't click off the guide because you have to do a quest. The quest is basically just a tutorial where you're just going to make a sword anyways, and you're going to be doing a lot of that if you're going to be doing the minigame, so you might as well just buckle up and do the quest. Alright, so you've started the game, there's a lot to look at. Before we go in and I walk us through a live playthrough, I do want to explain what each thing is and what it does. This top bar is Basically, the potential reward points of this sword that you're making, better molds equals better reward points and making mistakes lowers your reward points at the end. You really shouldn't worry too much about that bar right now. We can worry about that later when we talk about the molds. The second one here, this is the temperature of the sword. The corresponding color corresponds to when you are able to do a certain activity without incurring a penalty. As you can see, hammer is red so when you are hammering which is this trip hammer here which i'll talk about in a second you must be within the red zone of heat for the grindstone you must be within the yellow see how they correspond here and then to be on the polishing you need to be within the green heat setting bottom one that i kind of just talked about is your progress bar from the sword you'll start here on the left and you'll work your way to the right each one of these different phases indicates which job you have to be doing to progress that sword further. To heat your sword up, you will be using this lava pool right here. You can just click it and it will heat preform, which does it slowly, or you can right click and dunk your preform, which heats it up much more quickly. Over here, we have the waterfall. Same thing as with the heating, this cools it off. Clicking it once to cool preform will cool it down slowly, and you can quench the preform by right clicking, which does it much more quickly. As we stated before, you must get your sword into the heat range for the current job to progress it. So now that we are within the red range, this is the trip hammer. This is used to hammer out and shape your blade of the sword and you must be within the red. The hammer will cool off your preform as it is hammering away, so sometimes you will have to go back and heat it up before continuing to hammer. This green is the polishing wheel, which means that we need to be in the green heat setting. So just to do that, you just click on the polishing wheel and same thing as the hammer, it will slowly lower the temperature of the sword. This one's a little bit quicker than the hammer. The last one, we have here the grindstone and it works the opposite of the other two. Working on the grindstone heats up your preform, so you do want to start on the lower end and then have it work its way up. I'm going to play a clip, but you might have noticed that a gold or yellow bar formed around the interface. When this happens, you need to click on the tool that you're working with, whether it's the polishing wheel, the grindstone, or the trip hammer, and this will give you a huge boost in productivity. Watch out, this will bump you over the next job 
most of the time so just to be ready to click off if you are close to the edge when you're clicking on it because it will kind of send you over there and you don't want to incur a penalty really quick thank you guys so much for watching if you are getting something out of this if you are learning anything make sure to like the video subscribe to my channel for more old school runescape content Next, I'm going to take you through a live playthrough to show you how to play the game. I know for the quest, you did have to run through a sword, but uh, there's a few things that you might have missed. What you're wearing doesn't really matter. Fashionscape is best in slot. You are going to need ice gloves, though. Otherwise, this is going to be a huge pain in the ass. Honestly, it's not going to be worth doing if you don't have ice gloves. So get some ice gloves and throw those bad boys on and you are ready to get started. Go to our boy Kovac here, you're going to need to right click, get a commission from him. He's going to give you a type of sword that he is looking for. Next up, you're going to come over here to the mold jig, which should be empty, and it's going to highlight the part that is giving you a bonus for the commission and it's going to show you which ones are best for me right here it's obvious that flat being a 22 is best or we could do a needle point which is also going to be a total of 22 it doesn't matter which one you have just the overall value of the two combined is what you're looking for so let's just throw in a needle point here you then click the middle and uh, find which one is best looks like this one has 18 and it's all curvy and shit and then um, for the base looking like the chopper forte plus one is it, giving us a total potential of 58, which is pretty decent. For one, you're gonna start off with a bunch of default molds. You buy better molds in the shop. I am going to do a whole section later in this guide talking about those. If you wanna check it out now, I do have all of the time links down in the description. You can skip around to your heart's content. Next up, you're gonna load your bars into the crucible where they're going to heat up, melt, and you can pour them into the mold jig. You probably noticed that I have rune plate bodies and eddy B axes in the inventory you can use equipment instead of bars as long as the total value of them equals up to a 28 bars which fills the crucible all equipment gives you one less bar than what would be required to make the item i'll discuss how to maximize your usage of these later in the guide so once you're here you're going to fill up the crucible you're gonna have to right click and use the equipment if you're not using just straight bars And then click on the crucible to pour it into your mold and you can just uh you don't have to wait for the animation you can just immediately come to it and it will always start off on hammer so you will immediately run to the waterfall uh do three dunks and that should be good enough to come over here to the trip hammer and start hammering away after this you will follow along on your progress bar it will be different every time just alternating between the two so once we are uh, below the red we have to get it back in there so we're just going to dunk it for a few and come back to the hammer until we move on to the green once we're in the green here we're going to come here and quench it so we can get our heat setting down here into the green level you want to start high on them but it doesn't matter if you're like not exactly at the top see like I i'm not going to go heat that up to get it closer we're just going to go straight over and start polishing away and hope that we get a yellow bar to hit that sweet spot and just skyrocket right on over. That clearly didn't happen, so we are going to have to come heat it up. Once again, we're just going to dunk it to get it up there quickly. It doesn't need to be exact, especially since we're pretty close to the end. And come right back to the polishing wheel. Alright, yellow face time. Back to, back to dunk in the preform. Unlike the other two, you want to start on the bottom. As much close to the bottom as humanly possible for this one as it does heat up over time on the grindstone. We did hit that yellow, which threw us over to the next one, or not quite all the way over, but it gave us a massive boost, which basically means that for that phase, you don't have to heat it or cool it. If you do not get a yellow, you do have to heat it or cool it every single time. And once you are done, just go over to Kovac, right click him, hand in your sword, and then you will get an overview of how well you did. Got 188 points, so your points determines how many points you get in his reward shop. It's also going to determine how much smithing experience and how many coins that you earn, so you very much want to get as good of a sword as humanly possible. Which ones should you buy first? Um, there is a page on the wiki that does show you the uh, different molds that give you a different best in slot in different categories and how many best in slots that individual mold has. However, I also think it's advantageous to get a commission and then purchase a mold that 
furthers that individual commission. These only do cost between 300 and 450 and there might be 500s. I don't really remember. I bought them a little bit ago, but uh, ideally with these swords that you're making, you're going to be able to afford a mold every two to three swords. So you'll be able to get them pretty quickly along the way. It honestly doesn't take a lot of time. So I do think that purchasing a mold that is making your current commission a better score is a good route to take, or you can just optimize it using the wiki by purchasing the ones that have the most best in slots first, and then slowly working your way down. Other cool shit in here, uh, you got the double ammo mold, you can make twice as many cannonballs at a time now. Kovacs Grog can be sold in the Grand Exchange. This is a good way to make money once you get all of the other stuff. Uh, I, I would avoid the ore pack and the other stuff. Kovacs Grog is probably your way to go as far as a money maker. The Smith's Tunic, Smith's Trousers, the Smith's Outfit is going to give you an EXP boost. Honestly, it's not that big of one, but you know, it is what it is. We can, we, we gotta take what we can get where we can get it, right? Either way, they're all collection log slots. And then finally, there's the Colossal Blade. It is a lower level PKing item and it just, it kind of looks sick. Let's be real here. Okay, next I'm going to help you choose which alloys you're going to make. And I said alloys instead of bars for a reason. Alloys are going to work much better in the Giant's Foundry than just a standard bar will. The amount of points that you're going to get greatly increases by doing a combination. Uh, just that being said, like the amount that you get for like the base value for an Addy Rune combination is 130 where just rune alone like 28 bars of rune is a base of 60 so adding in the adamant not only drops your cost but it's also a much better sword and much better points much better experience and much better cash reward so i'm not here to tell you exactly what to do i'm just here to provide you the information and then you can do with it as you see fit not everybody is on the same budget as everybody else, so it's best to just have the information and, uh, you know, let her rip. So right here, we have all the different uh, alloys that are available to you. Judging by this, uh, you know, the better bars you use, the better alloys that you make, the more experience that you're going to get. Doing rune, you're going to top out an average of 250k an hour, uh, just dropping it down to the mithril at adamantite at the myth and addy tier. Uh, you do lose about 50k experience, but below myth and addy and including myth and addy, these are all profit. The only ones that you're losing money with is the addy rune, so you can make profit with myth and addy and still get about 200,000 experience an hour and collection log slots. That's pretty sick. Just scrolling this little table that they made over, we're going to look at the profits of these. And this profit is calculating just the rewards points that you get from the actual minigame. Of course, you can buy Kovacs Grog, sell that on the Grand Exchange and make even more money with that. If you're using just bars, which is much more expensive, your profits are going to be pretty limiting and uh, your loss is going to be pretty heavy with the rune and addy tier if you really rush in those uh the better experience rates and the better reputation points with that uh you're actually gonna save like what is that like 600k an hour by using the items to your advantage and there's another table that shows you which items are the best to use and gives you the lowest amount of gp per bar used that being said i, I told you that i wasn't going to tell you which ones to do but either do myth and addy or addy and rune if you can otherwise if your level's not there yet just do the highest one you possibly can get to so if i did want to talk about how you use the items instead of bars this is all on the wiki i will link this page uh the last graph that I just showed you is also on the same page, so I'm just going to link this page down in the description below so you can pull it up and use it. GE prices are fluctuating often, not really so much on this stuff since it's kind of bound by elk price, but you, you get the gist, things do change and fluctuate a little bit over time. So you can use this right here, select your bars that you want and then it will give you a price per bar and the GE price of the item. And then the most important thing that we're going to be looking at is the profit per bar versus the GE bars. So this is going to be the amount of money that you are saving by using this item instead of by just using bars purchased in the Grand Exchange. If that didn't make sense, you are going to want to use the item that has the biggest number in this category right here. 
uh, with one caveat, which I will explain next, but this is why you saw me using adamant battle axes because they are the highest profit per bar over the grand exchange bars. You cannot buy a lot of these. So if you do plan on doing a lot of this activity, leave some long-term buy offers in so you can purchase a lot large amount of them. I think uh, I'm using the rune plate bodies and you can only buy 70 of those at a time and you can only buy 125 Eddie Battle. Wow. Adamant battle axes at a time. So leave those offers in, they'll accumulate, and then you can dump those bad boys right into that crucible. So here we are looking at rune, and you might notice one thing that the rune claws are 3,000 and the rune plate bo bodies are 2,800, which look at me i'm branded right for choosing the rune plate bodies but there is one other thing to consider the daily volume of the item there's only about 344 rune claws that are bought and sold each day in runescape whereas rune plate bodies have uh 72 000 of them that are purchased and sold every day i actually tried to buy rune claws for this video just to make sure that it didn't work and they do not buy at this price you have to put an offer much much over this to purchase the rune claws they are not economically viable this number is not correct do not trust this graph for this you're really going to have to be doing the rune plate body that's really the only economically viable one to do with rune i mean you can do the warhammer and the battle axe but look at the rune you're just going to save so much more money per bar thank you guys so much for watching i think i covered everything i uh I, I planned it out ahead of time i wrote it all on the whiteboard and all of that so i think i got everything if there is anything i missed if you did have any tips or tricks that you personally like to do hit me with them in the comments section below all of the links for all of the resources that i spoke about in this video are also down in the comments along with a bunch of timestamps so you can skip around if you missed anything or if you want to take a look at certain individual parts of this on their own. If you did learn anything, I would appreciate a like and a subscription. We are so close to 1000. Thank you. I love you. And I will see you next time.